Okay, here we're going to talk about polymyalgia rheumatica, and this is a disease of elderly patients, and uh, it's pretty common, so it warrants uh, a topic of its own. So it is idiopathic and inflammatory, but what sets apart polymyalgia from something that sounds like polymyalgia rheumatica, and that's polymyositis, is that polymyalgia rheumatica is a disorder of pain, not a disorder of weakness. Now you can have pain and that can make you feel weak, but this is a disorder of pain. Patients with polymyositis will not complain of pain. They'll just complain of weakness. Polymyalgia rheumatica is a disorder of pain. It's associated primarily with the proximal muscles, and it has an abrupt onset. It occurs all of the sudden. It's self-limited, and unlike polymyositis, like I mentioned, the key feature is pain, not so much weakness. The pain is the big thing you need to take home from this. Polymyalgia rheumatica is a disorder of pain. It's very common especially among the elderly, affecting approximately 52 to 53 out of what, every 100,000 patients. So you'll definitely run into one of these. Whites are affected more than blacks by approximately a 2 to 1 ratio, and women are affected more than men. So that kind of follows a lot of the uh, autoimmune disorders. There is a high correlation between polymyalgia rheumatica and temporal arteritis, and so patients with either should be worked up for the other. And by worked up, I mean just asking about symptoms. I don't mean running labs. So if a patient, if you get a patient that's got temporal arteritis and you've diagnosed them, you should ask them, do you have difficulty getting up off a chair? Do you have difficulty combing your hair? Do you have difficulty going up steps? If you have a patient with polymyalgia rheumatica, you should be asking them, do you have pain when you're chewing? Do you have headache? Do you have scalp pain? because there is a high association between the two. So what are the muscles that tend to be affected? They tend to be the proximal muscles. And this is another way that this can get confused with polymyositis or dermatomyositis in that it's the proximal muscles that are affected. But with polymyalgia rheumatica, it is pain. There may be weakness, but it is a disorder of pain. So you've got the shoulders, the upper arms, the neck, the hip girdle, and the thighs. So another thing about polymyalgia rheumatica is that if a patient were to have this and never go to a doctor, ultimately it would be self-limited and it tends to last for about one to three years uh, if it's never treated. Of course, we are becoming or our doctors to treat the pain. So, uh, but just interesting to know that polymyalgia rheumatica is a self-limited disorder. It doesn't last forever, even if it's not treated. So the history behind these patients, uh, as mentioned, this is a symptom of the elderly. Uh, so if you have a 30 year old who comes to you complaining of pain in their muscles, it's not polymyalgia rheumatica. Nearly half of patients with temporal arteritis have or will have polymyalgia rheumatica. So I think I've hammered that point home enough. Uh, the symptoms. So patients will generally come in describing general aches and pains and stiffness, but when you delve into the history, you'll find that it's mostly the proximal muscles. It's mostly the thighs and the arms and the neck. And uh, they'll, this will give them problems with activities of daily life. It hurts to comb my hair. It hurts to go up the steps. It hurts to get out of a chair. They can do it, but it hurts. Furthermore, because this is inflammatory, the pain tends to be worse in the morning. So as they, uh, or worse after a long period of rest. So as they get up and move around, the pain gets a little bit better, but it doesn't completely go away. On physical exam, they will have normal strength, but as they exert more strength, the pain can be elicited. Their active range of motion is going to be limited by pain. So when they, when they move, it's not going to be, oh, I'm too weak to move my arms any further. It's going to be, oh, this hurts, this hurts, don't make me go any further. The diagnosis is clinical and of exclusion. So you can make this diagnosis clinically. There's no biopsy you're going to get here. However, to confirm the diagnosis, the best initial test is going to be an erythrocyte sedimentation rate. It is the most accurate test that we've got for polymyalgia rheumatica. However, it is not completely specific. 
So there's not really a lot of good laboratory examinations we can do for polymyalgia rheumatica. This is really the best one we've got. So in patients with polymyalgia rheumatica, as in any patient with an inflammatory process going on, the erythro erythrocyte sedimentation rate is going to be elevated. And it's at that point that you begin therapy. If a patient that looks similar to polymyalgia rheumatica does not have an erythrocyte sedimentation rate that's elevated, you should probably think of other diagnoses or uh, at least looking into other diagnoses. And those other diagnoses that you would think of would be infection, malignancy, mixed connective tissue disorder, or hypothyroidism. The treatment for polymyalgia rheumatica is very straightforward. It's oral corticosteroids, namely prednisone. So patients with polymyalgia rheumatica typically have a rapid response to corticosteroids. They will respond within two or three days. And so these will be patients that will worship the ground you walk on because there's nothing better as a physician than to give a patient a medication for something that's super painful to them and then to have them respond to it so quickly. So that's very rewarding. However, if the patients don't respond to prednisone within a week, you should start to think of possibly another disease process going on. The steroids can be tapered down at the point when they become effective down to the lowest effective dose. All patients with polymyalgia uh, rheumatica, as I mentioned, should be assessed for temporal arteritis just due to the high association between those two diseases. So. Patients with symptoms of temporal arteritis are going to require a temporal artery biopsy for confirmation and consultation with an ophthalmologist. However, the treatment is going to be the same. So this is something you need to do before treatment. You've got to ask these patients, even though you've decided, okay, it sounds like this patient has polymyalgia rheumatica based on their symptoms, you need to ask them, does it hurt to chew? Do you have scalp pain? Do you have headaches? because those are symptoms of temporal arteritis. If the answer is yes, then at that point you need to get, you start treating them, yes, but you're gonna to have to get a temporal artery biopsy at some point because you want to see if there's temporal arteritis. If there is, it's going to be important. Even though the treatment is the same with prednisone, you're going to have to have this patient in consultation with an ophthalmologist because patients with temporal arteritis are at risk for visual deficits or vision loss. So very important to uh, assess any patient with polymyalgia rheumatica for temporal arteritis as well. Even though the way we diagnose it with uh, an increased ESR uh, is the same. Uh, so the imaging does not play a significant role in diagnosing polymyalgia rheumatica. I just want to set that as a preface. But MRI has shown that the inflammation in polymyalgia rheumatica is more surrounding the bursa and the tendons rather than inside the muscle itself. So it's not so much an inflammation of the muscle so much as it's an inflammation of the tendons. But of course, if you have inflammation around the tendons, that's going to make using the muscles hurt. So um, that's just something to, to keep in mind. If the USMLE ever throws at you an MRI, I highly doubt they will. Um, but uh, I really, really, really want to drive home this uh, relation between temporal arteritis and polymyalgia rheumatica. And if you have any questions, definitely feel free to uh, write some comments, and I'll be happy to answer them. And that's it.